today is Friday, October 13th. Um, I'm starting out my morning by applying my two bobbins of singles from Wee Chickadee, my opalescent Coriadale. So I'm so excited. I finished spinning this braid yesterday and I was good and waited 24 hours <laughs> to start applying. Um, I'm sure some of you would think it would need longer. I'm still pretty new at this, but I just couldn't wait because I have so much beautiful fiber to spin. So I wanted to go ahead and get this plied while I have the time. So that's how I'm starting my morning. Fiber. This is Opalescent by Wee Chickadee on Coriadale, and um, this is my second skein, so I had two braids of this total. Um, and yeah, I'm applying it, and I absolutely love it. I think it's it's just totally gorgeous. This skein seems like it's turning out a little bit more on the pink and blue side versus the first skein I made, which was a bit more on the yellow side, which is nice because the fluffy alpaca cotton yarn that I'll be using in my tessellated pullover with this is it's a very pale pink so I think this will stand out better so I'll probably use this skein up at the top of the sweater so it's closer to my face so there's a little bit more color that kind of is where the eye is drawn but yeah I'm so excited about this spin I'm getting ready to go to my shop for the day, but I decided to make a batch of pumpkin muffins while I watch uh, British Bake Off, or the Great British, British Baking Show. Now these are some very pretty pumpkin muffins. Normally I, I would have put this in my cake stand, but it's currently occupied, so on this plate they go. I think I ended up with 15. I love pumpkin muffins, they are so delicious, and my daughter loves them too, so this will be both of our breakfasts this morning. I'm getting ready to leave for the day, and part of me is tempted to stop somewhere and get a coffee, which I have not done in a long time, other than getting coffee with a friend a couple of weekends ago. Um, yeah, I still have enough time if I leave right now. I'm considering it. Well, hello. I'm coming to you from the uh, end of my work day here at the shop. I'll be going home in about 10 minutes. That's when I close. And it's been a quiet day today, so um, that was probably for the best because we are going to be closed all next week while I'm in New York. And I really needed to do some things like place orders with some of my vendors. And that requires a lot of focus because there's a lot of money involved and I want to make sure I'm not missing anything and that I'm buying, you know, the best value and quality and so, yeah, that's what I've done today. I also dyed up a special order and I'm really excited to see it all together. I can't wait to put the special labels on, but I 
received a special order request for my gnome collection that I did last year for um, full-size skeins. So that's really exciting. So I dyed those today and now they have to dry. Um, we've had a couple of very overcast, chilly days these past few days. So um, tomorrow we'll go back up to about 80, maybe a little bit, like 78, and then it's gonna go back down. But I'm glad tomorrow's going up because all the yarn that I've dyed this week is still drying and I'm used to yarn drying like within a couple of hours of being outside. So I need that gnome collection to dry before I go on my trip. Um, but I don't leave until Wednesday morning, so my goal is to have it out by, to, to mail it out on Monday. Long story short, it will hopefully dry tomorrow so that way I can get it packaged up, but if not, I will come here on Monday and make sure it goes out. <sighs> I did finish my sleeve today for my Avena. I'm just doing my tubular bind off real quick before I go. It's only 40 stitches, so this will just take a moment. Um, and then I'll have a finished sweater. I, I There are a few ends to weave in and then I'll need to block it, so that's part of why I'm glad I'm getting it done before tomorrow because again it's a bit of a warmer day not much but enough that that'll help this dry since this is a worsted weight sweater with kind of a bulky weight yoke um, and I also washed my that red love note that I wore a couple of days ago I realized it was very overdue for being washed and wearing it the other day made me realize I, I might want to wear it at Rhinebeck because I have a perfect outfit in mind for it. So yeah, I went ahead and washed it today. And that one is a really loose gauge in the fabric and it's a fingering weight and mohair held double. So it dries a little bit quicker. It's, in fact, it's nearly dry now. So it'll definitely be ready. And now it smells good. And uh, yeah, there's nothing like a freshly washed sweater. <laughs> Well, wool sweaters in general, you don't have to wash super often, but I have worn that particular sweater at many events and things. Anyway, that's all I'm trying to say, is I washed my love note. <laughs> I'm not looking at you guys because I'm focusing on my tubular bind off. So I placed an order today for some uh, knitting needles. I carry the Chowgu brand because they are my absolute favorite. Um, but before, I only had the fixed circulars because ne uh, needles are probably one of the most expensive thing to carry in the shop. They are quite pricey. <laughs> um, and, and partially because you need multiples of everything so that you don't sell out of stuff in between orders, of course. I mean, basic business principles, but needles in particular are expensive. And when you get into things like cable length and needle size, and then when you start doing interchangeables, you've got all of your different cables and this and that. And so stocking that has been daunting. So I've just been doing fixed circulars from Chowgu in about every size and length that I could, but I'm finally branching out to carrying interchangeables, which I love. So I'm happy to do it, but again, it's just a major investment. So today I invested and I ordered those and my supplier is always really fast with shipping. So I bet those will get here in no time. But I also ordered a new yarn brand. Sorry if you hear my needle hitting the chair. I'm, I've got magic loop and I'm trying to get all my stitches back on the same needle. Anyway, um, I ordered a new yarn brand and I'm excited about it. It's, I would say, easily one of the most popular yarn brands. And I just invested a good bit of money into it without having seen it in person myself. So I hope it's as nice as it seems. Um, they have some really lovely colors. 
and they offer a lot of patterns to pair with their yarn. Of course, you can use this yarn for many, many things, but um, the fact that they offer patterns, I think this might be helpful since I have a good mix of customers who are seasoned pros and they're regulars and they know exactly what they want um, in every way. And then I've got, you know, my customers who are beginners or they want to be students. Um, and I have a lot of customers at this at the yarn store, and I'm sure other yarn stores encounter this as well, but I have a lot of customers who kind of want you to pick everything out for them. Like they don't, it's, you know, the choice is a burden and I get that. There's a lot to choose from. Um, and so sometimes people will come in and they just say, pick a pattern for me on this skill level and give me the yarn. So bringing in this yarn, I think will be nice to offer um, so that people will have a pattern catalog to match the yarn too, and they can feel confident and just focus on the knitting or crochet. They do crochet patterns also. So any guesses as to what the brand is? <laughs> I already carry Sadness Garn and they offer patterns and everything. And that's one of my most favorite brands of yarn of all time. I already carry uh, Quince & Co. I carry um, Kelborn Woolens, Imperial Yarn, um, the Zober brand, Zober Wool and Zober Ball. I've got some German like Kremka. I've got Kobasi. So anyway, any guesses as to the new brand? I have a lot of brand partnerships that I'm really excited about that are hopefully going to be coming up. But as I mentioned in my very first Vlogtober episode from October 1st, I do not take out loans. So everything I bring in is out of pocket and I don't take home a paycheck. Not right now anyway, I'm focusing on growing the business. So anyway, um, I have all these brands I'm really excited about that I've been in communication with like Knitting for Olive and Tuku, Tuku Wool. Um, lots of amazing opportunities. I just need the funds. <laughs> so those two brands will be my focus in 2024. I'm going to focus on like when I do my shows, bringing in enough money so I can place big opening orders. That's kind of the tricky thing is placing big orders initially. A lot of brands have opening order minimums and these two brands of course are um, European so I have to consider the shipping cost and the tax thing is a little bit um, above my head so I'm having to do my research on that but I'm very excited about those partnerships when they eventually come. And I would also like to in 2024 start bringing in some more dyers. Um, again, that's a tricky one. As a dyer myself, I know the kind of work that goes into a wholesale order. And I know that you make a lot less money, a lot less uh, doing wholesale than you do selling your products yourself. So a lot of hand dyers have pretty substantial minimums if they're even accepting wholesale accounts. So. A lot of dyers kind of have caps, but I have a few dyers who I very particularly want to start with. Um, but again, I need the funds. <laughs> so I'm not sure if that will happen next year or not, but that would be on, the, on my, uh, I, I would love to work on that too. I also have a few just general products that I'm really excited about that I'm planning on bringing in, but um, yeah, it all just comes down to what I do. Anyway, that's enough shop talk. <laughs> it's heavy on my mind since that's I've done nothing but ordering and admin today and some yarn dyeing. But I am so glad to have just finished this sweater. I just finished my tubular bind off and I've just woven in the end like a hundred times, so it should be nice and secure. Ta-da! I 
I might try this on tomorrow and get a little footage of how it looks on my body pre-blocked since I don't know how long it'll take to dry. But I'm definitely going to block this tomorrow. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm really proud of this one because uh, this yoke is my hand spun and that's the first skein of, of two ply. That's the first time I plied my hand spun. Um, and it was Rambouillet, so I was definitely figuring out at that point. At the, uh, now I have spun a few different um, breeds of fiber of, of sheep's wool. And so now I have a really, I think, much better understanding of what to expect in the spin and in the yarn. And this one definitely was a kind of like a, it naturally tends to be a little bit thicker and bulkier. Um, if I was to spin it again, I think I could draft it a bit thinner now, but um, anyway, the whole reason why I even picked this sweater pattern was because the yarn I ended up with was, it was like Aran to bulky weight, um, and I had just enough to finish this yoke, minus two of the color work rows, and they were just little kind of like extra points, so you wouldn't even know if I didn't tell you that. <laughs> um, so it worked out perfectly, so I got to use up every single last bit of my plied hand spun, in this and then this colorway it's dark and um, probably hard to see on the camera in this blue room but this is a this is my swamp lore colorway and it's like a dark mallard green and like over dyed with black so I love it uh, the, the skein and the yoke is kind of a different color it's a different dye lot and I kind of told that whole story in my last sit down podcast episode. I won't bore you with it here, but anyway, none of that matters now because it's all done. <laughs> so, oh, I'm so excited. This merino worsted base that I use for my, for, this is my merino worsted base and it is hands down some of the softest yarn I've ever felt in my life. It's so nice. My coloring book Raglan is knit out of this base also and that's one of my favorite knits. So, this is very exciting. That makes, I think, three finished objects for me so far in October that you guys have seen here. So, oh, and I swear, normally I would be finishing things left and right, but editing these videos every day in the afternoon is taking up the majority of my knitting time. So um, I have a few projects that I've been able to knit on like this while editing, but um, I've been knitting this year mostly color work and things that Editing really takes like a lot of, I have to be focused. So anyway, long story short, um, I feel like normally I would have finished more than this, but that's okay. So I have this sweater, my Avena by Jennifer Steingas. I finished my dad's best, and that was at the beginning of October. And I did my Rhinebeck doodle cowl. That's it so far. But that's a nice little list of finished things. Okay, it's time for me to go home. So I have to wake up my poor baby who just fell asleep and get my stuff in the car and go on home. Hey guys, I am about to go to sleep, but I just wanted to quickly come on and just say a quick good night. I don't know how interesting today's video was, but I w was pretty overwhelmed today, so I didn't really film anything too interesting, but I did finish plying the skein of yarn. And look at how the bobbins ended up almost perfectly used. This one is just the leader left, and this one is the leader, and then a teeny tiny bit of yarn. So it came out perfect, and it's so beautiful. So that is an accomplishment. Finished a sweater today and a skein of yarn. If my daughter goes to sleep soon, I might try to play The Sims. <laughs>